Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Earth, Wind and Fire Day, because we're recording this on the 21st night of September, of course. And this week, well, we had a fan poll last week, courtesy of Cat. And your four choices, if, just to remind you, were um, The Towns of Wen Chiang, Invisible Enemy, Full Circle, and the first three episodes of K9, the Australian 2009 spin off. And as you can probably tell from the introduction that I will hopefully put in after we uh, record this, K9 won. Yay! You're the only one who's going yay at that! <laughs> <laughs> The sad thing is, two sad things. One, Full Circle was winning with half the poll to go, and I was really happy about that. And two, 20% of our viewers voted for Talons. Why? I am very disappointed in you, 20% of those, of those viewers. Why? Well, I do know, at the very least, Mike replied and said, get it over with, get it done, yeah. you know, just get it out of the way. It's like, no! And Caliban did, no? Caliban did the same, so... They had they had good <laughs> motives for voting for it. It was to, it was to get it out of the way, but it didn't win. No, it's and uh, Christine's going to be upset if Full Circle didn't this. win. Yo, you want to do something to help get a story out of the way? Vote to make these fuckers watch Twin Dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> I've technically already seen it, so yeah, I've seen it multiple times. One more time than I had to, thanks to a certain someone. Yeah, Colin Baker, oh, how can you do welcome. that to me? <laughs> Touche. Also, I should probably get ahead, have, go ahead with the introduction, shouldn't I? At this point, in talk yeah, about, you should for about forty-five seconds. I think it's a little late, but yeah, so it's my two usual <laughs> co-hosts. Firstly, firstly, to my virtual left, he comes from a land called Fantasy, also known as Newfoundland. It's freezing inferno. Badia. Say that you remember, buddy, uh, mirrors in September, buddy, uh, <laughs> wait now a minute, talk about wait a minute, no, no, that's, that's not how this goes, so we don't wait. <laughs> Listen, you, 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 also you said it wrong, Newfoundland, not Newfoundland. Oh, God damn. Oh, I'm always doing that. You said it's it a like land, a land. Yeah, it's a well, land full of new fun. Newfoundland. One's, one's the dog, one's the country. Well, well, not the country, but the, the place. Anyway, who's that to your virtual right? And to my virtual right, I'm glad you asked that. To my virtual right. She has style, she has grace, she punches racists in the face. It's freezing. It's not freezing inferno. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it finally listen, happened. Listen. Hey, hey, I, I can have style and grace and punch racists. She has style, face. she has grace. She punches rest in the face. It's Concave Usurper, better known as Cat. God damn it, me. <laughs> oh, today is even better than it already was. It's only taken three years since I started doing these introductions. I finally got one of those mixed up. God damn it. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Yeah, it's so okay. K9. We'll just lord this over you forever. K9, it's fine. Then. I, have, I have style and grace, so I'm happy. That's a lovely compliment. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm over here being like, like you bloody Kong. <laughs> so, uh, but K9. Yes, K9. Yeah, so this is a, um, a spin-off, as we all know, pr um, from an Australian production company. It aired in, in the UK, actually, on Channel 5, but they aired it ridiculously early in the morning. I think they were hoping to bury it, and it worked, because I didn't know it was on UK TV until I researched <laughs> it for this podcast. <laughs> Oh uh, no, the, the network's tactics are working, run away! <laughs> so, the basic background of this is that one of the main people who is behind K9, uh, Bob... Baker. I forget his last name already. Bob Baker. Uh, Bob Baker. Yeah, Bob, Bob Baker. Baker. Uh, teamed up with a producer because he really, really wanted a new K9 series that wasn't K9 and company. So, <laughs> in... Get this, in 20... Or... I almost said uh, 2010. Uh, in 2009 and 2010, they finally aired this TV show, which was, oddly enough, also shown on Disney XD. Yeah. Cute. Weird. That's but yeah, right this is... Um, yeah. So it's just a bunch of 30-minute episodes. Um, the show is meant for teens aged from 11 to 15. 
Um, mm-hmm. There's 26 episodes in total, and it only got the green light for one season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not hard to see why, some... really. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, some people may see why. Oh. I actually... Um, I found this series quite some time ago when I was looking up stuff about K9, and I found this weird little... Uh, the first episode is on YouTube, and I was looking at it like, K9 Regeneration? What the heck is this? Is this some sort of fan-made thing? And then I started watching it, and I was like, this is actually pretty fun. What is this? Mm. I looked down the description, and in the description there was a link to Shout Factory TV, which is an online website where... You can actually go and find the entire series online for free. And, and then what? I proceeded to binge the entire series in one night. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I, uh, I looked around on Shout Factory while, because Kat linked us that for watching the episodes. And uh, they've got a lot of cool stuff. they got like old Mystery Science Theater 3000 episodes. Yep. And a whole bunch of like, I assume, translated Sentai shows. Yeah, they, Sentai. they used to. Oh, yeah, they have. Um, Common Rider on there. Yeah, there used Kamen to be the DVD, uh, have a DVD market for Common Rider and Tokusatsu and Sentai. Okay. Well, yeah, that's so... And I'm guessing they've yeah, got the DVD kind of... and now they're just like a, a website where you can watch it. So for the, for the first time, I can actually say this and not get in trouble with the law, you can watch this online 100% free and legal. Yeah. Hey, I did need, to, need to use a VPN, but that's still legal. Yeah. Yep. They do oh. sell, as far as I'm aware, they do sell some DVD compilations of this. Um, it differs depending on exactly which one you get, but pretty much it's just the entire series on a couple of deep. <clears throat> but yeah, if you go to shoutfactorytv.com/slash/series/slash/k-9, it's all there. We'll have it in the description if you want to check out the show, which I highly recommend. It's nice. I mean, I don't, but it, that's okay. <laughs> it was nice for once for me to go into one of these blind. Because I've seen all the classic Doctor Who, so I know what to expect, basically. But sometimes I know, you get this a one was a real role reversal. I felt amazing in this because it's like and I know now what you're me. Honestly, what? I, I, I watched the that. first episode of this and I thought, right, I, if I if I didn't have to watch the next two for for this, I was going to turn it straight off. But I watched the next two and actually I started to warm to it. Yeah, I haven't watched them all There's yet, a but um, I might. I might. There's over, a reason over time. I picked the first three episodes. So obviously, episode one is your pilot. Mm-hmm. You're going to have, you know, it introduces the characters. Um, it introduces the new K9. Uh, you get to learn about these certain people. Uh, episode two is where the characters start to slowly get fleshed out, but the real plot line has not yet begun. Um, to just sort of, you know, gloss over this very quickly, there's a main character named Starkey. He is the one who is sort of best friends with K-9. Um, and they're sort of the main two of the show with their sidekicks, um, the other two. Uh, and at <laughs> the, the end of... Uh, <laughs> the other two. <laughs> Draco Anyways, Malfoy um, and the girl one. Yes. Draco Malfoy! <laughs> Don't look at me. Cat made that comparison when I was reacting. I can't see he it. He reminded me a lot of Draco Malfoy. I can't see it. Yeah, but, um... You've ruined the show for me, but thank basically... you. basically... <laughs> you didn't like it that much to begin with. I said I was warming to it, and now I'm cooling off to it again. <laughs> Anyways, Starkey... It... You know what, let me just go ahead and go over the basic premise of the show. It's the year 2050. The series takes place in London, where it is actually being controlled by a dystopian government, which is headed by a place called The Department. The department is extremely xenophobic, and they do everything they can to either capture, destroy, or use any sort of alien matter or life. Um, So there's like a big prison where there's a bunch of aliens that are being experimented on. Uh, There's a couple of things in the future episodes that you'll see where people really just don't like aliens. Um, You have robotic officers that go around and are incredibly mean. Uh, You have... The head of the company or the department, who is incredibly mean, it's just basically Starkey is a freedom fighter fighting against the dy- this dystopian future. Yeah, we should mention there's like propaganda, holographic screens that are like, "Oh, do your part. Oh, be happy. Yeah. Don't think shit like that." Yeah, I, I forget what they say. It's like it's oh, for we're your protecting own good. you. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, shit like that. 
you know. And you've got these robot cops walking around the place, which is horrifying in our current climate, but since it's a kid show, they're also complete inept goofballs. Oh god, the costume yeah. of the robot cops are so bad. They fucking they, they <laughs> sound like I don't know who it is which recurring skit is. They sound like fucking Monty, Monty Python characters. Like, <laughs> oh, what's all this then? We're going to come and get you. We're the robot coppers. There's some of the Thompson twins from Tintin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. The Thompson well, twins anyways, are um... compared to robot coppers. <laughs> So, well, anyway, we end, to, yeah. to put a long story short, uh, mm-hmm. Starkey is still on the run in episodes one and two. So two mm-hmm. ends with him still on the, still quote unquote on the run uh, from the mm-hmm. government. But episode three, that's where we start to get the real dynamic going yeah. on. Uh, yeah, Starkey yeah. moves in with the uh, the professor character who's in this, uh, along with K9. They live there with Darius, who is the um, Draco no, Malfoy no. dude. And then Georgie, who has the worst spelling of any name I have ever seen, is sort of like the. Uh, this she's not really so much a side character in this as much as she is constantly not there because she doesn't live in the house with the others. She's a secondary pr- protagonist. Yes. And they spell her name with J's. And yeah, J O R J I E. Yeah, it's like I said, it's really People stupid. It's the future. People have weird names. Like, you've seen what people call their babies nowadays. Just yeah. imagine what it's going to be like in 30 years. That's, yeah, that's how you get Absidy. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. There are going to be so, so many little girls get called to, uh... Oh, gosh, that's true. <laughs> so yeah. I kind of I, I kinda like the idea of, like, the dystopia it, it's so close to our future. I mean, it's only 40 years out from transmission, but still, you've got, like, a hacker going against the goddamn government. That's very anarchist. I kind of like it. Because this is a young adult show, this is basically um, Baby's First um, Dystopia. Baby's First <laughs> Cyberpunk Dystopia. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's Blade Runner yeah. Jr. <laughs> I like that. Blade Runner Jr. Let's go with that. <laughs> yeah, and it's one of those things where you can kind of see where they try to get as futuristic as possible. Um, <laughs> well, where... If they want to do that, <laughs> the jail. If they want to the, do that, uh, they the should jail. have a bigger budget. <laughs> well, let, let's be fair. It's a canine spin-off show. I doubt that they had that big of a budget. Well, they had enough of a budget to, to redesign canine, which we'll get to a bit later on. But um, yeah. episode one, then, and what what you, you didn't point out is, yes, these were the first three were the right ones to watch because it's actually a three parter technically, loosely. In a way, yeah. yeah. They are listed on the episode guide as parts one, two, and three. Yep. So I even though they're that. not really parts one, two, and three, they're treated as such. So um first episode is called Regeneration. Interesting. Yeah. And we open with two guys who step straight out of the film Equilibrium. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell the, the makers of this watched a lot of science fiction before they wrote this. Oh, I'll have another sci-fi comparison later once we get to like some more premise of the episodes. Yeah. I think around episode two, I'll get to that. But anyway, we, we meet our professor character, Professor Griffin. Griffin with a yeah. Y. Griffin with a Y, yeah. Professor Alistair Griffin. Because nobody in this is in, in this uh, dystopia can spell, apparently. No. Hmm. No, not really. Anyway. It's, it's kind of funny because Darius has the most normal name. Yeah, Darius <laughs> is, is spelled close to how it should be. And the, and the bad guys, and the bad guys. Hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, one of the bad, one of the the antagonist ladies is just named June, which no funny spelling, just June. So this is a normal. Name. Presumably, April and May were taken. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so in this world, instead of calling them alien ships, they call them fallen angels. So I really like that cool. touch. I like that. Definitely adds an air of mythology to the That's whole thing. That's nice and different. Yeah, yeah, I'll give them that. Plus, it feeds into the dystopian aspect where everybody's xenophobic because obviously they don't want the general public to know that there are aliens around. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense considering this is a spinoff of Doctor Who, specifically like revived Doctor Who, where every five minutes a goddamn alien spaceship is crashing in like Leeds or wherever the fuck. Well, you know, dystopian future, blah, blah, blah. 
dystopia. Yeah, okay. So uh, we get Starkey. He's doing a hack. And then he meets up with Georgie, who yeah. knows that he's the famous hacker man, Stark Reality. Oh, my God. What's a name? And, yeah. So they run away from the robot cops who are like, oh, I get back in. We're going to get you and put you in the brig. And they end up hiding out in Professor Griffin's house just as he's doing an experiment with some shit. Yes, he's, he's trying to summon the uh, the family from the others. <laughs> family from the he, well, he, he's trying sort to summon of. his own family, actually. He, he's lost his family, and he's doing experiments to try and get them back. Essentially, Which... all the technology that he's had is part of what's called a space-time manipulator. And he's trying to get it to work. And um, that's what the component was that they brought him at the beginning of the episode, was another component of the alien technology yeah. to be able to make this space-time manipulator. But they Stark is a klutz and trips over the power cable and so suddenly he can't get to his family. Well, uh, we should also mention that the department is funding Professor Griffin so that they can use the time machine for yes. God knows what. Which, God wonders what they'd use it for, you know. Uh, maybe a pump Nothing comes good. I know. Nothing good. I know. I know what it is. I've Cat got knows. a hunch. I've got a hunch I might know what's going on there, but... <clears throat> oh, you have, have absolutely no idea. <laughs> Trust I don't. Me. Well, we'll just have to watch the series and find out. And you will have to, too. But for now, uh, whoopsie doopsie, Starkey pulled out the plug, and now the professor's family is lost in space time. Yeah. Well, no, it, it's more that they just never come through. As far mm. as I can tell, again, this is a kid's <clears throat> show. that Nothing bad is going to really happen. Um, no. Although later they do murder several people. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what? Yeah, but once Starkey uh, plugs this thing back in to try and repair his oopsie, uh, it ain't the professor's family that comes in, but uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I swear these guys were in Power Rangers. <laughs> I, I think what you actually mean, Frez, is Teenage Alien Villain Turtles, because they're bad guys. Yeah, the Jixon. Which I really like. Like they, they look like Power Rangers monsters, like right next to Yeah. It's really neat that they fuck with the frame rate on them, so they're like constantly moving at like twelve oh, FPS. You like that, do you? I, it, that just hit my eyes. No, I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a neat effect. <laughs> it's different. Anyway, you one, know how I like my kinds of shit. One of them buffs on Paul Starkey. Which will become important yeah, later. Yeah, we mean it. Uh, I, I'm, but, not, uh, I'm not joking. He yeah. just hurls, hurls yeah. fluid. Yeah. <laughs> Buffs and, on and top the of Starkey. And the turtles have everyone, the turtles have everyone uh, cornered. They've got Starkey cornered. Things look bad. But all of a sudden, beep boop, here's a robot dog to save the day. Yeah. It's K9 Mark One, And he's yeah. broadly close to Which... his design from the last time we saw him. Well, and then yeah, he this... blows up. And then he blows up. <laughs> yeah, okay. So we should mention the marks real quick, because this is something I actually know from Classic 2. So there have been multiple models of K-9. So K-9 Mark One debuted in the very first K-9 story, which was on our poll, The Invisible Enemy. You could have had that, just... but no, you picked this. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, let's not temper our expectations about The Invisible Enemy. Point is... The doctor took you the robot this? Good dog. Good job, along. everybody. <laughs> yeah. The doctor took the robot dog along with him, and uh, when Leela left in the invasion of time, he left K9 with her and built a new one, K9 Mark II. Yeah. This K9, we actually saw leave the TARDIS in Warrior's Gate. We did. K9 Mark III was introduced in K9 and Company, gifted to Sher to Sarah Jane Smith. Who then blew up Anthony Stewart Head in School Reunion. And himself. And then there was K9 Mark IV, who showed up at the end of School Reunion, and I gather had some scattered appearances in the Sarah Jane Adventures. Yeah, basically, um, the writers of the Sarah Jane Adventures realized that K9 was too powerful for their show, so they stuck him in Mr. Smith for most of it. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's and mostly... I, I will say. <laughs> I will say that is one of the downsides of this show is a lot of it is solved very easily by K9. 
um, because all he has to do is just pew pew laser, and then the thing's gone. Like this but is there. There have been some times where they do have to sort of take him out of the equation. Yeah, K nine is stuck. He's on a screwdriver. Yeah. This is a this is an issue that has been with K nine since like the very beginning, or half the, yeah. half the stories where K nine is on the TARDIS. Have him either disassembled or not involved, either because the writers are like, K9 would, be, would solve the situation in a second, or the people in charge of visual effects were like, we're, we're in a goddamn, we're filming in a goddamn swamp. We're not bringing the robot dog prop. Have him, have him go under repairs or some shit. I don't care. But yeah, I noticed, even in the three episodes, I noticed that they do a lot of creative fiddling to uh, yeah. keep K9 out of the equation long enough for. Yeah. The tension to build and to have the problem be solved. Otherwise, anyway, the um, the, <laughs> anyway, the, the K-9, anyway, saves, K-9 Mark One. Yeah, he uh, comes back here for reasons that we don't know, but Cat may- maybe knows, and uh, blows up. Yeah, he full down go boom. Essentially, um, his power is running way too low. Um, mm-hmm. He won't be able to stop the Jixen, so he tells everybody to get the fuck out, so he can. Oh, yeah, that's destroy. the name of the turtles, by the way, the Jixen. Yeah, the Jackson. Well, but then, of course, up. because this episode is called Regeneration, mm-hmm. it turns out K9 has a regeneration unit inside of him. He does. He also comes and he regenerates. I don't know if I to mention about his appearance out of the time stream. He gets this, this grand superhero like fanfare. <laughs> Which I think they, they do in the Sarah Jane Adventures as well. Completely, yeah, he regenerates into a completely new and unique form to avoid BBC copyright. Basically. So, um, yeah. you've, you've, you've hit the nail on the head here. So, they had the rights to the character of K-9 through Bob Baker. But any unofficial spin-off doesn't have the image rights to those characters. They can, ju- they can use them, but they've got to appear different. So, I guess they just took the license fee for this one episode for his, like, five-second appearance, and then yeah, basically. redesign came out for the rest. Okay. That, yep. that, that's fine. That's fine. And but then, also, but what's not fine is that, uh... as, as you say, he, uh, he regenerates, but we've got a problem, and the problem is Darius. I hate this guy. Well, before that, uh, one Ninja Turtle survived. Oh, yes. Common Ninja Turtles. <laughs> And that's going to be a problem, as we soon see, but yeah, Darius. Uh, yeah, okay, this so page. this is yep. the Professor's assistant, Darius, or Draco Malfoy, as cats call him. <laughs> what a cock! Oh, what an asshole. Yep. <laughs> he immediately dislikes Starkey. Which is fair enough, because I dislike Starkey as well, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate to say like... this, but once you get later on into the episodes, you start to see other sides of these characters. Characters that put everything into perspective. Well, yeah, that's, that's yeah. Fine. That's fine. yeah. But that's this, how, is one, this is episode one. This is episode one, Darius. So basically, oh, no, yeah. I'm, like I'm just a... saying that as you get further in, they do actually have character development. Yeah. They don't like okay. just okay. wave their hand and say it's a kids show. Who in cares? the first three, three or four episodes, Darius has some rather good character development, which I'll get to later. He has but, a decent, um, yeah, he has a decentish character arc. He, yeah, he's just an absolute jerk. He reports Starkey to the cops. And he gets arrested. And he gets arrested by the robot cops. And sentenced to six months of VR jail. Yeah, the VR jail is a nice, <laughs> interesting concept here. Which, it's just him sat in a room, which, hooked up to a headset, which you think which he couldn't take off, but he can actually take it off at any time, as, as it's revealed yeah, later. I, yeah, I said that. I said that. That that doesn't make much sense. In prison. Well, what's also weird is it's a blank void, but Kat uh, yeah. pointed out that he probably hacked away, like, whatever bullshit propaganda, like, double think they were probably going to indoctrinate him with in jail. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, when you see uh, the VR prison does appear in later times, and in those other times, it does have different looks to it. Okay. So, I don't know if he specifically hacked himself the blank space. Or if the blank space is what they gave him, and it just occupies his mind so much that he can't use the rest of his limbs. Sort of like a paralyzing thing effect. Uh, well, he's able to use his limbs later in the episode to take off the goggles. But... Yeah. Anyway, yeah. he's about to get some help in the form of Georgie. Who hacks in. Who hacks into the secret alien. Det- and we have a really... 
scene where like her mom calls and it's like, Georgie, are you at ballet practice? Do you have your pretty pink tutu on? And Starkey mocks her for this and I'm like, and I'm like bitch, you can wear a frilly pink tutu and be a badass hacker. Don't yeah. No gender shame, Starkey. G- Georgie is the best well, of, the, of the human characters here. Well, he's not so much shaming her for being a girl in this. That's something that they no, actually don't like do. Shaming they don't for, shame her for being a girl. She's like, I know what it's no. like to be like you. And she's like, oh yeah, really? In the pink frilly tutu. But he just comes across as a dick. Well, mm. yeah, because that's essentially what he is at this point. And this is not a good start to the show, though. You got your main, your main protagonist is a completely unlikable prick. Mm. One of your supporting characters is so unlikable, I wanted to step into heavy traffic five minutes after meeting him. Georgie's all yeah. right, but she doesn't get a lot to do in this first episode. Except use a terrible British accent. Hey, you know who I think saw this episode? Who? Chris Chibnall. <laughs> <laughs> now, hear me, out, hear me out, because the Jixon, as it turns out, they mark their prey by puking on them, and then they're relentless hunters who will stop at nothing for the glory of the kill. And, oh dear God, I'm just summarizing the stenza again, aren't they? They're the stenza with puke instead of teeth. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm sorry, but when you, well, when you ex- say- except they don't actively try to hunt down random people. They don't no. make a mark. They make down people who are specifically enemies to the Jixon. Yeah. Anyway, uh, oh my my favorite bit of episode one. Oh, I think I know. It's the about. robot cop comes in. The Jixon oh, yeah. into, into the into the detention center. It shuts it down. So Starkey takes off the headset. Tra- yeah. But before it's you can homing escape, in on a, yeah. Before you can escape, it's homing in on a, the puke because yeah. It the the Jixon yeah. shows up. <laughs> One of the robot cops comes in. <laughs> this he is goes, so good. Oi, what's going on? It gets bitch slapped out the way. <laughs> Oi, what's going on here? <laughs> Ow. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, Oi, what's going on here? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Now the oh, reason why these British actors so are so it's terrible so and so so unrealistic is most of these actors, if not all of them, are not British; they're Australian. Oh God! But the the, the the thing is set in London for some stupid reason. <laughs> well, something that we should mention is before this happens and Starkey manages to get out of the cell. There's a very nice scene with Griffin and K9 where. They're talking about K9's memories. Um, essentially, when he either when he came through the portal or when he regenerated, his memories got damaged. So he doesn't remember a lot of what happened before he got here. So they put they put in this sort of um, uh, what's the word um, identification system where Griffin bounces a ball several times. And once that sound is imprinted, then K9 could hear that across dimensions. And this does become a plot point later on with the with the repetitive sound. So that's yeah, something yeah. that you need to oh, be nice. aware of. That'll, yeah. that'll come in. That'll come in in a second. But uh, see, that's clever. Now, that, that uh, kind of that kind of goes into Pavlov's dog condition response. Oh, yep. that's cute. Okay, that's what they're okay. That's Whether nice. they're meant to or not. Yep. Anyway, Although, uh, if you say that to K9, he will immediately say, "I'm not a dog." Oh, yes, he doesn't like being called boy or dog, which is a nice touch. Which is interesting. So, uh, anyway, uh, Starkey gets puked on again. <laughs> but he breaks out of jail and uh, runs back to, of all places, the professor's lab. And there's this scene where K9, because he's covered in Jixon puke, uh, K9 thinks that Starkey's a Jixon and is ready to blast him. And fucking Darius is just like, oh, yeah, he's a Jixon, uh, get him. Motherfucker was gonna let this guy get like Thanos disintegrated just because he was a slight dick to you. Fuck's sake. But here is where that identification system comes in because Starkey repeats the first words he said to K9, and mm-hmm. that caused K9 to stop and think logically rather than with his system. Yes, and he, he designates him as young master. Cute. And I'm but assuming, now we've, but now I'm assuming later on company. he'll probably refer to Georgie as young mistress. No, he doesn't. No? Oh, oh. these shows go. But in the, but in the meantime, uh, the professor has a visitor from the department. Oh, it's yes, June. yes. 
Jude! Let's see what Dempsey Murstarkey and K9 have to hide under a desk. While she's like, you haven't seen... You haven't seen that rebel boy or this weird robot dog we picked up on the scanners, have you? No, I don't know what you're talking about, June. <laughs> and he's literally talking like that, too. Yeah, Griffin is like, not good at trying to act not suspicious. But there's, there's a great all. bit where June is insulting K9, so she, you know, he's ordinary run down, and k sort of getting angry and rising up. <laughs> behind. <laughs> and Stark is trying to push him back down. But yeah, they hide and... Uh, and the group's like, really? I just thought looking at him, he, he was sort of noble and splendid. And, <laughs> and Kenai goes back down. Mm-hmm. So they're hiding, but uh, K9 does mention that uh, the Jixen have a mark, so they're going to hunt him for like 800 years. Because that's the lifespan of a Jixen, so yeah. that's a problem. And that's basically the end of episode one. The so. only important thing you've not mentioned is the whistle. Oh yeah, the whistle, but... Starkey gets a whistle. They make a, a, a mess of the dialogue here. K9 says, it will call you to my side. He meant the other way around. No, that's on, that's on purpose. That's on purpose. Because um, K9 in this series is very... I wouldn't say he's very self-absorbed, but he knows what he's capable of, and he knows that he is good. Essentially, he's acting a lot like the Doctor here, where uh-huh. it's, it's one of those moments where it's like he thinks of something, he's like, damn, I'm good. Let's do it. Cute. So in this case, he's saying that I'm I'm so important. You're going to come to me. I'm not going to come to you. <laughs> yeah. So that's episode one, which is it's it's an it's an auspicious start. You know, it's got some potential, but you're, we're giving it the three episode test here. So you're like, okay, I can. It's interesting what we're putting down. So episode two, unless we have anything else to mention about one, episode two is liberation. Yep. Yeah. And we get a title uh-huh. sequence. Which is serviceable. It's not like... The title sequence is fine. The problem is what comes immediately afterwards. So they have every episode after, after episode one, the pilot. It is, uh, starts with this um, exterior shot of London. Uh-huh. It does not match up at all with the set then are using. Because <laughs> it's like real real stock footage of London and here's the set. And oh god, it doesn't, it doesn't mm. match... Well, remember, kid show. Hmm. So we get reiteration of why the professor is doing what he does. He's doing it because he's he wants to save his family, which I don't know if he's pulling them from an alternate time or pulling them forward in time from before they like had an accident and died. I know. <laughs> Cat knows. Pretty much uh, any questions that you have about the, the mysteries in this show, I immediately know. River Song, keep it under your hat, please. <laughs> <laughs> all right but, dear spoilers the, this is where uh, a little a quick little gag comes in where the portal accidentally turns on and uh some rats come out you say quick little gag this happens in almost every single episode okay where yeah, but, okay. it activates or something to essentially either the stm as they call it activates or something happens with the department or something happens with the prison those are the three ideas that you can have. And yeah. It's a very monster of the week show. Yeah. So what it reminds me of, actually, it, this is a bit of a strange comparison to make, but if Doctor Who is Star Trek The Next Generation, K-9 is Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And what I mean by that is Doctor Who and Next Generation are very much travel shows, you know? What strange alien planet are we going to this week? Whereas K-9... And Deep Space Nine are like set in static locations, either the space station or Professor Griffin's lab, London, what have you. So the plots are more like, what weird alien thing is going to come through the wormhole this week? Yeah. Essentially, yeah. But this week, it's not an, an old, a new thing, it's an old thing. The Jixon's back. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I should also point deal. out that Griffin, for me, is one of the more endearing characters because they actually probably give him some motivation. Oh, yeah, well, he's like the adult lead, as it were. George is fine, but doesn't have much character development at this stage. Well, Starkey there's something. Is, is irritating. Generic, unlikable rebel protagonist, 2056. Mm-hmm. And we know all about Darius. I swear they get better. Well, I Darius gets better that. in this episode, actually. Slowly. Yeah. 
slightly. But to start so, with, he doesn't because he wants Starkey gone. Because he doesn't want him getting in the professor. So he makes way. a deal. He says, "He says if you if you um help me go to the prison. Oh yeah, we should point out that. Um, yeah, we should point out this. Yeah, Georgie's upset is, uh, about an alien prison, an alien yeah. detention center, in episode one. How she knows Dollar's about this? Prison. Who? Oh, how she knows about this? It's a mystery to everyone. Except it won't be in twenty minutes. But <laughs> um, so he says, "Well, we're going to go to the detention center." He says, "All right, I'll help you. But if you do this, I want you gone. I want you out of the professor's life. The professor's like Sorry. family to me. Your bad news. I don't want you around him. So they make a deal. Uh, Darius has got this car, Mariah." It's like a sentient car. Yeah. That it drives itself. It just look okay. Yay, Mariah! Mariah. <coughs> I could have also mentioned... Point, there, was, there was an invisible car on the road. That's episode three. Oh, yes. Wait. Wait, hang on. I finally uh, got it. Oh, no. It's Mariah, and she carries people. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo. The best part is Mariah is actually a taxi, so. Oh my god. I think god. it's named after the Black Mariah police van. Probably, uh, but also, I just got that pun. And it's like, oh my god, that's amazing. And also, boo! <laughs> so, K9 is off to do surveillance on the prison to try and do some shit like break, break the aliens in there out, because it's basically alien. Kid show Guantanamo Bay. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite a disposition. Alien kid show Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it's sanitized for a kid show, but it, it's still it like works. You know, it works. You get the idea. Oh, we're gonna keep these people without any Th There is a very funny bit actually that after um they get out of out of the car and Mariah, and by the way, driverless car, this was what, broadcast in two thousand and nine? Mm -hmm. So drive those cars then were going to be like yeah, a pipe dream, time. but now they're close to being reality. Nice. If not already. But yeah, so, they, they get out of the car and they're like, right, well, we need to find K9. Well, he could be anywhere. As this is going on, k is flying up in the sky of London. With like drones. These drone bombs lasers and shoot him down. <laughs> And they're like, well, he could be anywhere. And as they say he could be anywhere, he lies in the skip behind the... <laughs> And gets covered in baked beans. Oh, God, that's going to come in later, too. Anyway, uh, Darius and Starkey, <laughs> they go down into, like, the sewers, I guess, to try and find a way in prison. And Darius uh, stumbles upon the way in, quite literally. He, he does that thing that uh, Del Boy does in Only Fools and Horses with the bar. He like, leans against the wall and it falls through it. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I, I, I was looking for a secret passage. I, I meant to do that. Then why did you call for me to help you? I Keep it nice I and cool, really... Star. Nice and cool, know what I mean? <laughs> oh, God. So they head into the uh, prison through the underground entrance and are immediately captured. Yep. Because, yeah. 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 <laughs> So they get locked up with a uh, blue alien that they call like, Mr. Whippy or Mr. Whippy. some shit. Mr. Mr. Whippy. Because yeah. he smells. I don't, that's, Although I the don't actual know. Mr. Whippy is K9 because when he flies into the beans, it, it gives up a fart sound. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> They've got some really interesting alien designs here, for better word. There's like a geisha here. Did, did you say interesting? Because I think you meant to say low budget. It's a, it's like a kid's show Power Rangers knockoff thing. What do you want? They've got the budget to make K9 a redesign completely from the ground up. Uh, that's where they use the money, on K9. So they've got the budget later on to have a, a, a an invisible car effect, but they haven't got the budget to make better costumes for these aliens. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so, there's, there's a guy yeah, uh, here, there's a tree. <laughs> there's like a guy that kind of looks like an axon. Yeah, there I is. I don't know if it's supposed to be an I don't know if it's supposed to be an axon or not, because Bob Baker and his partner David Martin did create the axons. I don't think it's an axon. It, it kind of looks like it. It might be just to sort of evoke memories of the axons. Like just a, like it, at least close right. enough. Close enough. It's never named or anything. Yeah. Anyway, uh, June, the lady from earlier, shows up in the prison 
And she's like, oh, well, hey, we got you. I'll put you back in the VR jail for a year. Unless you give me that robot dog. Which, of course, he doesn't. No. She's also got a, 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 a um, an assistant. Well, he's the governor of the prison. He's, yeah, the warden Thorn. and what have you. Well, basically, there are two factions to the department. June heads up specifically anything to do with aliens. And Thorne, who is the other person, he heads up anything to do with security. So he handles the prisons, uh, the robot guards, um, you know, everything okay. to do with that. And throughout... Uh, part of the series they do clash a lot because he keeps impeding on her she keeps impeding on him so on and so forth so bureaucracy in dystopian hell world <laughs> yeah plus okay. you can tell that thorn is supposed to be you know june is somewhat evil here but thorn is like super evil right so he becomes like the main main antagonist essentially i mean the the kids grill her about you know you've got all these poor aliens like up oh we can't send them back it's not safe we have no choice but to keep them locked up here yeah sure yeah sure uh, jen you got no choice which it's weird that this is a doctor who spinoff because this is one of those like systems that i would expect peter capaldi to land on and fucking dismantle yes. in 45 minutes but since it's a spinoff you don't get that no which is fine you do get the, a gypsy in, in a fight with a mirror on. Oh, oh I, I'm going to get to that. Did you wait? Just wait. But before that, the professor gets a uh, really lovely, touching scene where he try, he's trying to motivate K9. K9, wake up! K9! And he's like using the regret he has over not being able to save his family to motivate K9 to wake yeah. up and save the kids. It's really sweet. I like that. And he also uses that bouncing ball sound. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the prison cell, uh, Darius picked the pocket of the warden. Yeah, Darius did something useful. Cell. Hold the presses. There, nice. there is something that we should point out as well. So, um, when June and Thorne first get there and they're talking to Starkey and Darius, um, mm -hmm. she suggests to Thorne that she, he should probably search their prisoners to see if they have anything. And they find Darius's communication device. Mm -hmm. She calls Griffin, and they have a scene where she's talking about why they are imprisoning the aliens. And oh, yeah. basically, the department's reasoning is to catalog them so that if they do find any other species that commit a crime, they'll know exactly what they're looking for because they'll have, you know, DNA, basic genetic makeup, so on and so forth. That's profiling. And they just, right, and they can't be allowed to wander around London. And they have tried to send them home. But apparently they can't, and yeah. she insists that this is the only way to do it. I believe that. You know, it, it wasn't a thing that the series that the Doctor Who universe had in two thousand nine. But imagine the shit she must have flipped after Zygon inversion. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, fuck? we we do kind of get a little bit of something like that in this episode. Oh, never let June. Yeah. Loose on the trap oh, street, yeah. my god. But we're, gonna, we're gonna get to that, we're gonna get to that. But uh, first, uh, yeah, the kids are breaking out. <laughs> like, the guard is just sitting here playing on, like, a, it's like a kid show handheld game system. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the robot cops is like, shouldn't you be on guard or something? Now go away, I'm on level six. Beep, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and then the alarm goes, what was that? I thought, and then the cop goes, um, I thought you got to level seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, suddenly, Georgie arrives, and she has one of the best lines I've ever heard her say. What's that? She says that she tracked Mariah's auto drive and then followed the bickering. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that is a good line. That's good. Yeah. If yeah, these three are your are. main characters, Georgie is the best of the three. So they break out of jail, they break all the aliens, so, you know, leftist revolution, free every, all the oppressed from space Guantanamo Bay or whatever the fuck, you know? It's good, it's it's good. Good. Yeah, so the Jackson shows up again, which is bad as Starkey's trying to get out, so K-9, he doesn't have enough power to really blast at the Jackson since he got shit blasted by the drone. This is one way... Yeah, so that's the first uh, real story beat of them 
contriving a reason for K9 not to just solve the day with his space laser. But they do a yeah, neat trick where running they run... out of power is a common one. Yeah. They do a neat trick where they run back to the jail cell and Starkey takes off his jacket and throws it into a cell because the Jixon's tracking the puke, the pheromones or whatever the fuck. So he the Jixon goes into the jail cell for the jacket and then they lock the Jixon in the jail cell. So that's neat. Hey. And then someone shows up. There was a throwaway line in the episode about the Miron, which are the mortal enemy of the Jixon, who we don't want to meet because Miron and Jixon fighting could destroy an entire planet. Yeah. Well, a Miron shows up, and it's a shapeshifter. It looks like just a normal guy, and then he immediately shapeshifts into Miron and tries to like shoot Starkey with a laser blast for whatever reason, I guess, because it's like K-9, he smells Jixon on him, and is like, Arr! mortal foe. But uh, more striking... I, I have to point this out. Cat, you did it. You finally did it. <laughs> the Miron, you see, they, they're they kind of like Zygons in that they can uh, shapeshift into people, so that's a Doctor Who mirror alert right there. But also, he's like an aquatic being with fins and shit. Oh. Cat, you <laughs> gave us a fish person. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. And there goes the copyright. <laughs> <laughs> Fish people! We did it! We did it! <laughs> Blessed be! We made it! The best After thing about this, I, I know years. him well enough to know that this um, this happiness is not put on. He really is happy about it. We <laughs> 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 I can't believe it. It's the best early birthday gift since Colin Baker said my <laughs> name. Oh, man. Oh, you are such a dork. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's, uh... Okay, let's let's calm that down. Let's turn that down. Just uh, just just turn your volume anyway, down. Anyway, I, 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 I down, cannot down, remember... Down. I can't rem- quite remember how they dispatched with the mirror on. Uh, uh, the Jixon screams, and that uh, makes the Miron retreat. Oh, the Miron just leaves. That's right. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, the, yeah. the kids it, are trying to get the aliens out. June's blocked the door with a force field. Yeah, and this is the shocking reveal, is that June is Georgie's mom. Dun, yeah, because we, we, we really couldn't figure that out. Wait, what? No, that, that, that got me. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. Well, I guess you right. Oh, it's every it's every science fiction kids show ever. <laughs> I don't watch that many science fiction kids. To be fair, they at least try. I don't believe they ever actually say June's last name, which is Turner, which yeah, is the same as okay. Georgie. So they don't say yeah. Georgie's last name. Yeah. They say so, yeah, June's. You know, they they at least try. They yeah, try. mildly surprised me. They got a lovely like exchange where she's like, Georgie, I thought you were doing homework at Vicky's. And I thought you worked in IT. So there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not happy with each other right now. Yeah. No. And then the Jixon screams uh, and knocks her out. Good riddance. Yeah. But that knocks her uh, force field control bracelet alien tech thing off her arm. For Starkey to grab it and slap it on the Jixon and blow it up. Yeah. Boom. Which, if the doctor were here, he'd disapprove of that. But he ain't here this time. So. Now, here's the weird thing. When the episode ends, mm-hmm. Darius, Starkey, and Georgie are all at liberty. Well, Darius and Georgie are at liberty anyway. So did she let the aliens free? Well, there's a line yeah. about the prison being shut down, so must have. Yeah. It, I- essentially, what happens is um, everybody finds out exactly what that department has been doing with all these aliens, and so they kind of have to set them free. Right. Yeah, because somebody, totally not Professor Griffin, leaked what the department was doing. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And we get a little fun coda with the rats all in the professor's place because I guess there's some sort of alien rats every 10 seconds. And uh, Starkey and K9 are now on the run the department of cops. Yeah, because he, he that, fulfills and- his deal with Darius. 
Mm-hmm. At this at this point, flipping Griffin doesn't st- doesn't intervene, doesn't say anything, and neither does Georgie. Where to go, team? Mm. They don't go. Yeah. What the hell do you mean? You made a deal that he leaves? That's ridiculous. He's on the run. Stop that nonsense! No, they just let him leave. It'll be fine in the next. And we get a, we get a, a, we get a, a, a repeat of, of the first time we see Starkey, where he's putting up like anti department department propaganda and getting a, nearly getting arrested by the cops. But this time, K Nine's with him. So uh, that's episode two. It's interesting. It has uh, a fish person, so 10 out of 10. (laughs) The way to Fresno's Uh, heart out of fish person. So that You are actually going to love the shape of water if you ever get to see it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god, I haven't actually watched that. Oh, the salt one, that one, best picture was glorious. (laughs) <laughs> so, <laughs> episode three the final one i watched i know you two went beyond but it's the, it's the last one we're going to cover in detail this is yep. the corvin so we've got starkey and canine still on the run starkey specifically saying that he's a dissident against the department and uh this is where you had a thing raniac uh, they almost get tracked by an invisible car. Damn it, die another day. <laughs> Great. For, first, the robot cops sound like Monty Python, and now John Cleese's robot, invisible car is in here. Jesus. <laughs> they call, that's the man called the Vanquish. We caught the Vanish, and I call it the worst thing Bond ever did. Yeah. <laughs> well, well not, not the worst thing. Not the worst thing, but one of the worst. So, uh... Starkey and K-9 are just hiding out in, like, a park or something. And then there's this scene where Starkey pulls out, like, a can of baked beans. And is like, well, time for lunch. And K-9 analyzes it. And he's like, uh, be careful, bastard, with that. And then he makes, like, a fart oh, noise. Oh, that's the fart noise. That's in episode three, not two. Yeah. Yeah, I jumped the gun. Sorry. He makes a fart noise. Well, a, a fart noise is played. I don't know if he made it, but... No, it's just like, <laughs> he's analyzing the beans, and it's like, you know, beans make you fart. That's just his analysis. Yeah, that's the joke. That's the joke. But, uh... Great joke. I've never heard that one before. <laughs> so, it's a kid's professor... show. They're going to have some sort of fart or poop jokes or whatever. Yeah, True. you just wait. You wait. But for now, we cut back to the professor and Darius, who are sitting down for, for dinner. Well, Darius is sitting down for dinner. Professor Griffin is up fixing around with like some machinery and talking about stuff which but I don't um, know can again. i just say can mm-hmm. i just say i really really like the design of the stm they have like these pipes that have these like long crystalline um poles that are stuck inside of them there's like multicolored buttons all over the place the actual device is suspended sort of like um a crane machine above the main hallway of the mm-hmm. uh the mansion that he lives in really cool mm-hmm. looking it's neat. So anyway, a fucking gremlin comes from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, so, someone must have really loved Blockbusters from 1984, because this alien, who's on the screen right now for you, thank you, editor, it looks like a gremlin from the movie Gremlins in a Ghostbusters boiler suit. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, this thing sneaks up on the professor while Darius is tending to the fire, and they vanish. And something we haven't mentioned, once uh, Darius calls a K-9, who is he? I think he calls Georgie for help, and K-9 and Starkey also show up. I don't remember the exact... Uh... He calls Georgie for help, and then she tells Starkey. She contacts yeah, okay, Starkey. Okay, okay, fair. Something we forgot to mention in episode one, Professor Griffin is an agoraphobe. He hasn't yep. been outside in ten years, so this is incredibly unnatural and suspicious. He wouldn't just leave... So yep. something must be up. Yep, and right. I can't say uh, later on the series they do handle it pretty well. Um, they do sometimes point it out where there are times where he tries to go outside and he just can't bring himself to do it. Um, <laughs> but it doesn't really become a plot point until a very specific episode. So yeah. they handle it well. Right, right, right. There's also a quick gag where K-9 uh, cooks... Starkey's baked beans by shooting a laser at it and cooking it at like 50,000 degrees and busting it all over the place. But luckily, G- Georgie comes and gives him some cooked food to be nice. 
And, you know, K-9 is basically detecting that she's blushing, so it's just like, beep, boop, boop, crush detected. Yeah, that was kind of cute. What? <laughs> well, I'm not blushing. Because we're kind of a young adult show about a, a possible romance angle. <laughs> so they... Darius calls Georgie, and Georgie brings Starkey and K-9 to investigate to see where the professor went. And K-9 is uh, detecting traces of phosphine gas, which won't be invented for another 300 years. And then some bastard with goggles shows up on the time-space machine. And this gave me very, like, 11th sort of vibes, where it's like, oh, hey, I'm from the future. This dangerous alien is loose on your planet now. So that's bad. But, yeah, the Corvin are bad aliens from the future who come back to the past to steal the memories of scientists to do bad shit in the future. Well, not even the memories. They pretty much just liquefy their brains brain and drink up all the knowledge. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. I drink your milkshake. Yeah, I drink can, it all. This series can get really, really dark. Yeah. Like, surprise. And, and, dark. and there's that wonderful gag, the typical gag where the guy's like, the Corvin's only weakness is <laughs> feed cuts. Again, original comedy, except it isn't. Original comedy is original. But, you know, using the phosphine gas, uh, they can track the Corvin and the professor down to, like, I don't know where it is, but it's like a fr- freezing cold vault. Yeah, and, and this is where Darius starts to come into his own because, okay, episode one establishes he's a, he's a huge jerk to Starkey. Episode two, he has his new scissors over Pitthorn's pocket. Here he comes into his own. He really wants to get the professor back. There's he, a nice scene with him and Georgie where there's a contrast between Darius having no parents and no rules, where Georgie has June, who's all about rules and shit considering she works for the department so it's like a neat kid show contrast yeah it's, it's not actually stated in the in the show itself unless it is after episode four cat if it, if it is don't tell me but um the reason why he he doesn't um, get on with his parents darius but my implication was that they support the government and he doesn't okay so there was an ideological clash there and he he left and that's why he he's with the professor and uh, treats him like a he, he he treats him like his family. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to say one thing. I know what happens, and the fact I can't tell you is, like, eating me up right now because it's so funny. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll watch the later episodes then. Okay. Well, uh, speaking of sidelining K-9 to make the problems uh, less easily solved, uh, K-9 gets drunk on thin gas. Oh, my God. Well, his his sensors get fucked up. No, he's totally he's getting drunk. He's basically acting drunk. I'm a wizard, was robot affirmative. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, uh, Starkey is just outside where the professor and the Corvin are. And he's and canine's drunk as shit. And he's like, come on, we need you. And the Corvin catches him. Takes him into the, the same. The room. COVID is, is almost like it's setting up uh, the professor for an autopsy, but he's not waiting until the professor dies to do it. No, he's yeah. just doing it right away. Also, the Corvin, they're, they're in a freezing cold vault. Thrive on cold? Yep. So, that was the weakness let's... that, um, that, that yeah. the, um, the random guy from the future didn't get to tell him about heat. Anyway, well, Starkey gets well caught. no, not not that. Um, it's a different kind of weakness. But um, oh. basically, they're trying to get this specific information from Griffin, where he worked on a system to cool the Earth to help, help you know help prevent global warming. They want to take that so then they can cool the entire Earth and destroy humanity, and then they'd be in this is, you know the this, Ice Age paradise. This is a. Uh, I don't know. I don't think Bob Baker actually wrote for them, but that plot sounds suspiciously. Like a '60s plot for the Ice Warriors. Mm. Like I'm it pretty was sure written by their... Tim Pie. Yeah, I, I I don't think he was around back then, but I'm pretty sure both their plans involved in the '60s that is involved. Uh, we're going to freeze the Earth and take it over. So there's yeah, something. But, but the Corvin wishes they were the Ice Warriors. Yeah, yeah the Ice Warriors, not, but... iconic baddies. The Corvin, oh, not so much. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, <laughs> consider the fact that the Ice Warriors are literal green men from Mars. Yeah. Well, not it's, Mars. But still iconic. But still. No, 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 the Ice Warriors are from Mars. Oh, the Ice Warriors. Okay, yeah. No, not yeah, the, the core. The Ice Warriors them. are from Mars. Yeah. but the, yeah. the Ice anyway, Warriors are still uh, iconic. This thing isn't. It, yeah. Well, they're iconic. <laughs> this fandom made them iconic. If the core of them were... Probably be iconic. No. Anyway, Anyways. just just anyway, just no. <laughs> Starkey gets captured, and he and the professor are strapped to the table. Well, they're, I say strapped, but they're really stuck in a force field. It generates. They're paralyzed. Paralyzed, yeah. So it's up to Darius to save the day by picking up a thing and smashing it on the ground. Yeah, and it, it worked surprisingly effectively. Mm-hmm. The corpse is distracted long enough for him to remove his hand from the professor's head. And so he's, he's comes not re- in, drunk as shit, but, uh, and mush. Yeah, the Corvin thrive on cold, so heat will fuck them up. So Starkey tells them to make baked beans out of that fucker. <laughs> and does he ever? <laughs> <laughs> this thing's death, the Corvin's death, is so freaking metal. It's, it's fucked up. He gets shot with a heat laser and just, like, cracks open and explodes. I did not expect that in a kids show. For kids, for kids, it's for children. Oh, oh, trust me, it gets a lot. I know. In in the next episode, in fact. Oh no, no, no! It gets worse than that. Oh Oh, my god! Okay, now I have to watch the rest of the show. Before that, we should wrap up the third episode because uh, the professor does some shit. He hacks into the department mainframe and wipes Starkey's criminal record. Yeah. So that Stark is no longer a fugitive. There's a great little bit here of acting from the <laughs> guy that's playing the professor. Is like he said, I should remind you, this is all to- totally illegal. Yeah. And as you said, it's just like this, this little smile. And I, like, I don't care. <laughs> Cute. But the professor also has a spare bedroom, So, uh, which Darius mentioned to Georgie because he was trying to get Georgie to live with him. Yeah. Crush me. Yeah. We have the love but triangle way, set up here. Love triangle. Either way. Yep. Either way, uh, she mentions it to the professor because Starkey needs a place to live. So Starkey gets to meet the professor now. And the room is pretty old. I'm probably assuming it's like one of his his wife or daughter's room or something because there's like old paintings of skeletons and shit everywhere. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's pretty weird. And, you know, so Starkey goes to bed. He's with K-9. K-9's still a little fucked up from the phosphine gas. And then the robot dog fucks. <laughs> End of part three. <laughs> end of part three. End of our uh, coverage of the Australian show. But uh, well, uh, well, we got anything else? No, no. I don't know. If I want to touch, touch on episode, on episode four. four really so, quick. um, because because a couple of important things do happen. I, uh, won't I didn't spoil watch it, it but so episode four. If you do watch this, uh, Alien Bounty Hunter. Oh, yep. so Tim Shaw. This guy's better than Tim Shaw. Yeah, he's better. Lots of things are better he than actually Tim looks, Shaw. I, I've, I've bagged on this show's budget, but actually, the budget clearly went into the Bounty Hunter's design, because he actually looks really cool. Nice. He's kind well, of like Kano. Well, it went Kano. to his design and making the canine fly. He's kind of like Kano from Mortal Kombat. Oh, fuck, that sounds yeah. cool. But with like a tribal tattoo over his face instead of like the metal plate. And... Okay. But he, okay. For, for a limited budget, he's not a bad-looking baddie. And I'm sure that this show beyond that has some interesting. Yeah, I, I, I might actually, um, in my own time, sort of go through it. I don't know if I will or not, but nice. I so am we... going to. Um, uh, well, instead of giving my thoughts on this, because obviously I watched the entire series in one night. Yeah. Um, what I'm going to do is instead I'm just going to name my favorite episodes of this. So That's fair. If you guys want to go ahead, then you absolutely can. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so I'll I'll start then then uh, Jerry and then you give us the favorite episodes and then we'll we'll go to the next time. So um, yeah, that's right. This is um this is perfectly serviceable television. It's only a spin off in the sense that K 9s in it. Otherwise, it could just be a generic uh, science fiction uh, young adult show. But it's not bad. Um, some of the characters are very unlikable, like Starkey and Darius, which is a problem. That's your main protagonist in Starkey. But the professor's a nice character. He's well-rounded. They give him some nice motivation. 
and the bit where he's talking to Canaan about his family is really quite endearing. Georgie's paper thin as a character, but the actress does quite well with her, if that makes any sense. Um, I started warming to Darius a little bit uh, in episode two and, and, and more in episode three, so I'd like to see where he goes as a character. I hope he doesn't regress back into being a complete jerk. And June, I think, has got some potential as a character as well. The rest of it is, you know, the, the sets don't match up with the exterior shots, so that's that's not good. The Some of the costumes are painfully bad, like the robot cops. You can practically see the padding falling off of them as they walk. It is what it is. Yeah. And I'm not mad at our fan base for nominating it, but I'm not exactly going to send more Christmas cards either. <laughs> <laughs> you're just disappointed I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed, yes <laughs> we could okay. have full so, circle uh, people f- full circle uh, are, are you done, done right here? Can I... I'm done, yes okay. so full circle's really good and would have been a little you, but you know what, I- I'll take this consolation prize this was the second thing I wanted to win I definitely wasn't pulling for talents and I wasn't really <laughs> pulling for invisible enemy either but uh, this is, as Rainiac said, perfectly serviceable kid show, sci-fi. I kind of like the monster design. Some of it is hit or miss. Robot cops are goofy, but, you know, in a kid show way. A lot of the goofy, dumb nature of it I can really excuse as, you know, it's for, it's for 10-year-olds. I probably would have ate this up, something like this, if I was 11. You know, that's around the time I was getting the, to watching the old Star Trek movies and Star Wars and stuff like that, so something of that vein would have really lit me but no. It's fine. I might watch some of the episodes that Kat recommends if I have nothing better to do on rainy day or whatever, but otherwise, this is neat. I, I, it's, it's fine. It's fine for what it is, and I enjoyed watching the three episodes. Thank you for that. Cat. So, as I said, I'm just going to list the episodes that I feel really stand out for this. Um, the only problem that I have with this is that that's a majority of the episodes. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> but basically, um, my favorite is episode... Uh, my favorites are episode 6, called Fear Itself. Episode 7, The Fall of the House of Griffin. Ooh. Episode 9, Dream Eaters. Uh, mm. Episode 10, Curse of Anubis. Okay. Episode 13, Aeolian. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Episode 15, Black Hunger. Um, then there's episode 20, Taffany and the Time Loop. Uh, episode 21, Robot Gladiators. Followed then by episode 22, Mind Slap, Nap. Episode 23, Angel of the North. Episode 24, The Last Precinct. And then 25 and 26, which I won't name because they do the names do contain some. Sp- and am I right in so, thinking that's a, that's a five-part finale? Um, no. No. Episode 25 and 26 go together. Um, but once you hit um, those, those episodes I mentioned, they just get really, really good. So, Essentially, once you get to Taffany in the time loop, because Taffany in the time loop is friggin' amazing. I am I am very intrigued by the one about Anubis. I like the titles, because the mix of titles you gave, it's a mix of, like, pulp stuff and really evocative weird shit. Yeah. So, like, I'm intrigued. Yeah. Like, shit like Taffany in the time loop or Fear Itself. Yeah. Wild. Yeah, the, the titles are a lot more... <laughs> Yeah, but than I thought they were pretty been. plain titles for the first three episodes. Yeah, and I can say these episodes deal with a lot. They deal with abandonment. Um, obviously, they deal with fear. They mm-hmm. deal with the idea of what's right and wrong. They deal with death and murder. And uh-huh. you okay, you know. sold me. You've sold me. Right. Yeah, I'll slow right. my way through trust, the rest of the series. Trust me. If you guys see Black Hunger, um, this isn't really a spoiler because you find out within the first five seconds exactly what's going on. But it plays off silence in the library. Oh shit! Yeah, I'm sold. It, oh, it's it's not it's not exactly silence silence in the library, but there's a part of it that's really really like it. Neat. So that was Australian canine. Yeah, and and thank you for putting it on the on the poll because um, so I've had to buy, oh, you know, I didn't time. like it, but actually it was it was perfectly fine. And it's it's necessarily something new I haven't seen before. 
Same. Yeah, plus it's a nice break between all the classic Who's. Okay, which, Freezing Inferno, we'll you're up, to, Dazzle Us. Which, it's my go. Can, can I just say, by the way, please don't pick any of the three that didn't win the poll. No, I'm not, I don't I don't have any of those on the top. That's okay. That's okay. I have a plan. So, as we're recording this, uh, next week, next Sunday, actually, is my birthday. Hey! And we'll, and we'll record the day after that. So, I figure we should do something a little special, you know? I thought, I, I thought I'd take us all on a lovely holiday. But then I looked at the news and realized we live in a hell. <laughs> so <laughs> let's instead go on a staycation holiday together to celebrate my birthday. A lovely little party by way of classic Doctor Who. Next time on Doctor Who Reviews, Sylvester McCoy in Delta and the Ben. <laughs> Yes! I don't know anything yes! about this. It's 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 just fun and dumb. Oh, and it's I a trip. It. It's a trip. Ooh. Oh, good choice. So, uh, see you for the birthday celebration. Yeah, and before we wrap up, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, two things I want to mention. Firstly, Emily Cook is bringing back the um, the the, uh, the Doctor Who watch-alongs for one night only. Uh, this Saturday... Mummy yes. on the Orient Express. Hey. Yeah. Episode. Okay, the best, of, the best episode of Series 8. And we have a bit of housekeeping of our own to announce. Cat oh, was no. productive oh, and did a sweet. thing. We have a Twitter account. Yeah. We've got social media. Yeah, so if you'd like to contact us, uh, other than our uh, email address at goitsdominateyourself.com, uh, uh, gmail.com, sorry, goitsdominateyourself at gmail.com, we now have a Twitter account. At Reviews Doctor. Which I, I totally just put in Doctor Who Reviews as our tagline, and it generated that all by itself. Perfect. So I'm so happy. It's I'm fine. so happy. Perfect. It, wor- it works. So more three of us will be using that to uh, to post things about the, the show. And, uh, yeah, if you want to contact us or, or just talk about and something I about the show. I promise I won't retweet a bunch of mirrors on the account. I, I'm not holding you to that they, promise because I think you'll do it they anyway. They made me sign a waiver. They made me sign a waiver. Yeah, waivers well, can that's, be broken. Okay, you had to sign a waiver, but I didn't. Yeah, I'm gonna say, <laughs> damn legal loopholes. And there you go. My barrister is fired. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a barrister. I don't even have an agent at the moment. I'm trying to fix that, but uh, anyway. <laughs> Say goodnight, Raniac. The less you know about my, <laughs> the less you know about my life, the better. Uh, so thank you to Cap for uh, nominating K9. Thank you to the audience for picking it and for listening to us talk about the show. And we'll see you next time for Delta and the Bannermen. You forgot to thank somebody. Oh, thank you to um, Freezing the Verb for having a birthday next week to pick Delta and the Bannermen. Yes, <laughs> you're welcome. Who else have I, th- <laughs> have I not thanked? Oh, is it just you? Thank yourself. By the way, this is this is not a bit, but I'm losing my voice, so we're going to wrap it up. Okay. Well, Until well, next time, night, bye for now. Bye.